Welcome to the video exploration of the beauty of Bali, exploring the paradise of the island of the gods. In this video, we will take you on an unforgettable journey to Bali, also known as the island of the gods. We started our adventure at Kuta Beach, one of the most famous beach destinations in Bali. You will see soft white sand, seductive waves perfect for surfing, and stunning sunsets. In addition, we will explore Sanor Beach which offers stunning sunrise views, and New Sadua Beach which is exclusive and vibrant with fun water activities, boasting white sandy beaches and beautiful coral reefs. The next trip took us to visit beautiful ancient temples like Pura Basaki. Basaki Temple is a temple complex located in Basaki Village, Rendang District, Karangasam Regency, Bali, Indonesia. The Basaki Temple Complex consists of one central temple and 18 companion temples. Tanalat Temple, the famous sea temple with stunning views. You will see the beauty of the temple towering over the rock as the ocean waves crash around it. This site is absolutely mesmerizing. Aluwada Temple became famous because right below it is Pakata Beach which is often used as a place for surfing sports, even international events are often held here. You will be presented with an amazing Kikak performance and a dazzling sunset view. The next trip, we go to Ubud, the center of Balinese arts and culture. We will witness a Balinese religious ceremony, with dazzling traditional dance and music. You will see vast green fields, beautiful green gardens, and enchanting rice terraces. Ubud is also known as a haven for artists, and we will visit an art gallery showcasing stunning local works. During our exploration we don't miss the opportunity to visit Mount Batter, an active volcano that offers spectacular views. We will also explore Lake Baratan in Badugal, a beautiful lake with an iconic temple in the middle. Let's continue on to West Bali National Park, home to incredible biodiversity. You'll see stunning tropical rainforests, rare flora and fauna, and snorkel in the crystal clear waters. Apart from that, this video also features a culinary tour of Bali, by tasting typical foods such as suckling pig, sate lilit, and Balinese mixed rice. Spectators will be invited to try the unique and authentic flavors of Balinese cuisine which are mouth-watering. In Bali we can enjoy the very famous traditional massage therapy. In Bali, there are several places that are ideal for shopping for souvenirs typical of this island. Here are some popular places to buy souvenirs in Bali. 1. Sukawadi Art Market, located in Jianyur. This market is famous for various handicraft items such as traditional Balinese clothes, wooden statues, paintings, jewelry and various other Balinese accessories. Sukawadi Art Market is a great place to find Balinese souvenirs at affordable prices. 2. Ubud Market Ubud Market is located in the center of Ubud and is one of the famous markets in Bali. You will find a variety of Balinese arts, crafts, clothing, jewelry and other souvenirs here. If you are interested in arts and crafts, Ubud Market is a great place to shop. 3. Jalan Legian, Kuta. Jalan Legian in Kuta is one of the famous shopping centers in Bali. Along this street, you will find shops, boutiques and shopping centers offering Balinese clothes, accessories, jewelry and other goods. This place is also a great place to buy famous brand products. So, join us on this amazing journey as we explore the beauty of Bali, explore the paradise of the island of the gods. Prepare yourself to see stunning panoramas, rich culture, and the warmth of the friendly Balinese people. Thanks for watching, and enjoy this video.
Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we will take you to explore the charms of Lombok, a beautiful island located in Indonesia, an exotic gem in Indonesia that offers an unparalleled charm. This island is filled with stunning natural beauty, rich culture, and unforgettable experiences. Let's explore its natural wonders, beautiful beaches, the stunning Gili Islands, and the fascinating cultural riches of the Sasak people. Lombok is an island located east of Bali, Indonesia. This island is known for its stunning natural beauty, stunning beaches, and rich culture. From soft white sandy beaches to towering mountains, Lombok offers a variety of attractive natural attractions such as Mount Ranjani and the Gili Islands. In addition, the cultural diversity and customs of the Sasak tribe are also a special attraction for tourists. With the combination of its natural beauty and cultural charm, Lombok is a popular tourist destination for both local and international tourists. The beauty of the beaches in Lombok is something that amazes and attracts the interest of many visitors. This island is famous for its soft white sand beaches, clear sea water, and stunning natural scenery. Some of the famous beaches in Lombok include Lombok's Kuta Beach with its ideal waves for surfers, Singjiji Beach which offers spectacular sunset panoramas, and the beautiful Tanjungan Beach with its fine white sand. Apart from that, the Gili Islands adjacent to Lombok also offer stunning beaches with clear water and rich underwater life. The natural beauty of Lombok's beaches makes it a paradise for beach lovers and divers, as well as an unforgettable tourist destination for anyone who visits it. The Gili Islands are three small islands located northwest of Lombok, namely Gili Trawangan, Gili Mino, and Gili Air. These islands offer the charm of stunning beaches, clear sea water, and a relaxed atmosphere. Gili Trawangan is the largest of the three and is known as a party island with various nightlife spots. Gili Mino is a quieter island and is suitable for those seeking serenity and natural beauty. Meanwhile, Gili Air is a combination of a calm atmosphere and more relaxed entertainment. The underwater beauty of the Gili Islands is no less interesting, with beautiful coral reefs and a variety of marine life. Gili Islands are a paradise for divers and snorkelers who want to explore the fascinating underwater life. With stunning beach charm and a pleasant atmosphere, Gili Islands are a popular tourist destination in Lombok and offer an unforgettable holiday experience. Mount Ranjani is a towering volcano with a height of 3,726 meters on the island of Lombok, Indonesia. This mountain is one of the popular climbing destinations in Indonesia. Climbing to the top of Mount Ranjani offers a challenging adventure experience and stunning natural scenery. Along the way, climbers will pass through lush tropical forests, beautiful lakes such as Lake Segera Anak, as well as spectacular panoramic views. The peak of Mount Ranjani, which is referred to as Plawangan Sembilan Peak, provides extraordinary views, including stunning views of the sunrise and panoramic views of the surrounding islands. Mount Ranjani is the ideal base for nature lovers and hikers looking for a challenge and extraordinary natural beauty on the island of Lombok. Sendongaya Waterfall is one of the stunning waterfalls on the island of Lombok, Indonesia. Located in the Mount Ranjani area, this waterfall offers beautiful views and a fresh natural atmosphere. This waterfall has a height of about 30 meters and the water falls from a steep cliff, creating a beautiful stream. The environment around the waterfall is filled with tropical green forest, creating a calming atmosphere. Visitors can enjoy the beauty of nature, take a walk on the trails, and enjoy the refreshing spray of the waterfall. Sendongaya Waterfall is a popular place for tourists who want to relax, enjoy the beauty of nature, and enjoy the cool atmosphere amidst the wild nature of Lombok.
Lombok has interesting caves which are an attraction for visitors. One of the famous caves in Lombok is the Nirmada Cave. This cave has holy spring water which is believed to have healing and good luck properties. Apart from that, this cave also has a beautiful garden inside. Bata Bolam Cave is also an interesting cave to visit. This cave is located on a cliff and offers spectacular views of the ocean through a rock crevice. The caves in Lombok provide an interesting exploration experience and enrich knowledge of the island's geology and history. In addition to its natural beauty, the culture of the Sasak tribe also captivates tourists who come to Lombok. Sasak culture is the original culture of the tribe that inhabits the island of Lombok. The Sasak people have a unique cultural wealth and rich traditional heritage. They have distinctive traditions, customs, and arts. Traditional Sasak dance and music, such as the Pershan dance and the Topat Warak dance, are an integral part of their lives. You can enjoy traditional dance performances such as the Mask Dance or the Jendang Balek Dance, which dazzle with their elegant movements and magnificent costumes. In addition, handicrafts such as woven bamboo, woven cloth, and wood carving are also characteristic of the Sasak culture. Visitors can visit traditional Sasak villages such as Saad village or Sukarara village to learn about their daily life, get to know traditional arts and crafts, and watch interesting cultural performances. Sasak culture is one of the most valuable heritages on the island of Lombok, reflecting the richness and uniqueness of local culture that should be preserved and respected. In Lombok, you can also taste the culinary delights of Sasak. Try traditional dishes such as Ayam Taliwang, which is known for its distinctive spicy taste, or Pleasing Kong Kong, a fresh vegetable dish topped with hot chili sauce. Taste the delicacy of local food while enjoying the mesmerizing view. So, join us on this amazing journey as we explore the beauty of Lombok. Prepare yourself to see the stunning panoramas, rich culture, and warmth of the friendly people of Lombok. Thanks for watching, and enjoy this video. Welcome to our YouTube channel. This time, we will take you on an unforgettable journey to West Sumatra, a province that is rich in natural beauty, arts, culture, traditions, and special foods. Get ready to explore the stunning enchantment. West Sumatra is a paradise for nature fans. West Sumatra is a province located on the island of Sumatra, Indonesia. The capital city is Padang City. This province has an area of around 42,012 square kilometers and is one of the most populous provinces in Indonesia. West Sumatra is famous for its rich culture, traditions, and stunning natural beauty. From stunning mountain views to verdant valleys, this province offers stunning landscapes. Kerinci Seblet National Park is one of the interesting natural tourist spots in this province. Here, you will find dense forests that are home to a variety of rare flora and fauna. Apart from that, there are also Lake Mananjo, Lake Sinkarak, and Mount Merapi which offer spectacular views. Traditions and celebrations are also an important part of the life of the people of West Sumatra. 
One of the interesting traditions is the Pakujawi Festival. Pakujawi is a buffalo race held every year in the Padang area. We will witness the joy and ferocity as the strong buffaloes gallop through the fields, amidst the cheers of the enthusiastic spectators. This event demonstrates the courage and expertise of farmers in controlling their buffalo. Apart from its natural beauty, West Sumatra is also famous for its rich culture and unique traditions. The Menangkaba tribe, which is the largest tribe in this area, has a strong customary system, such as the matrilineal system and the Gadang house which is a symbol of Menangkaba culture. During your visit, don't miss the chance to sample West Sumatran specialties, such as rendang, sate padang, and nasi kapau which are rich in spices and authentic flavors. With all its beauty, West Sumatra is a destination that promises an extraordinary and memorable travel experience for every visitor. West Sumatra has several famous historical places that attract the interest of visitors. One of them is Pagaruyung Palace, which is a replica of the historical Menangkaba Palace which was lost due to fire. This palace has a magnificent architecture with terraced roofs and beautiful carvings. Pagaruyung Palace is an important symbol for Menangkaba culture and is often a tourist object and historical research. Apart from Pagaruyung Palace, West Sumatra also has the old city of Padang, which is the historical and cultural center of Padang City. In the old city of Padang, there are various historical buildings such as the Nederlandsche Dish Handelsbank Building, the Adityawarman Museum, and the Pigeon Monument. The old town of Padang keeps memories of the Dutch colonial period and displays a distinctive architecture. Visitors can explore the historic streets, enjoy the beautiful architecture, and feel the atmosphere of the past that is still present in this place. So, join us on this amazing journey as we explore the beauty of West Sumatra. Prepare yourself to see the stunning panoramas, rich culture, and warmth of the friendly people of West Sumatra. Thanks for watching, and enjoy this video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will take you to explore the beauty and rich culture of the city of Palembang. Located in South Sumatra, Palembang is a city steeped in history and boasts a number of stunning landmarks. Get ready to go on a visual journey that will take you across breathtaking iconic landmarks. Let's start. Ampera Bridge is an icon of Palembang City. This bridge is located above the Musi River and connects the Sebarang Ulu area with the Sebarang Iller area. The Ampera Bridge is a symbol of pride for the people of Palembang and is often used as a background in television programs that highlight the culture and beauty of this city. This monument was built to commemorate the struggle of the people of Palembang in seizing Indonesian independence from Dutch colonialism. This monument is located in the Youth Square, Palembang. This monument is a historical place where Palembang warriors fought against the invaders. This museum is located in the Palembang Flower Garden Complex and is dedicated to exhibiting Palembang's historical and cultural collections. This museum displays various artifacts from the heyday of the Srawijaya Kingdom such as Buddha statues, historical objects, and artifacts related to the culture and customs of Palembang. Palembang Grand Mosque is one of the largest mosques in South Sumatra. This mosque has a beautiful architecture with a predominance of white color and is located in the center of Palembang City. Palembang Grand Mosque is a place of worship and also an attractive tourist attraction for visitors. Fort Kutubisak is a historical heritage of Dutch colonialism in Palembang. 
Fort Kodobasak served as a military headquarters and has now been converted into a museum displaying historical collections, including objects from the Srawijaya Empire and the Dutch colonial period. Thank you for enjoying our journey through the beautiful landmarks of Palembang City. We hope this video has given you a deeper insight into the rich culture and beauty of this city.
Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will take you to explore the beauty and richness of Balinese culture. This island of the gods is famous for its stunning natural beauty, rich culture, and landmarks that capture the hearts of visitors. Let's start. Number 1. Ulandan Ubratan Temple is a Hindu temple complex located on the shores of Lake Bratan, in the Bedugal region, Bali, Indonesia. Number 2. West Bali National Park is one of the important conservation areas on the island of Bali, Indonesia. Number 3. Tanalot is a sea temple located on the west coast of Bali, Indonesia. Number 4. Kuta Beach is a paradise beach charm in Bali which is famous for its attractive waves for surfers. Number 5. Pura Luhur Uluwatu. A majestic temple on the edge of a cliff with stunning sea views in Bali. Number 6. Bisaki Temple in Bali, considered the largest Hindu shrine on the island. Thank you for enjoying our journey through the beautiful landmarks of Bali. We hope this video has given you a deeper insight into the rich culture and beauty of the city. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will take you to explore the beauty and richness of Asaya's culture. Asay is a province in Indonesia which is famous for its natural beauty, rich history, and charming landmarks. Today, we invite you on an unforgettable journey through some of the most iconic landmarks that define the heart and soul of this extraordinary region. Let's start. Number 1 Pulau We. We Island is a beautiful island in Indonesia located at the northwestern tip of Sumatra with stunning underwater natural beauty. Number 2 Masjid Raya Baitaraman. The Baitaraman Great Mosque is a magnificent historical mosque located in the city of Banda Asay, Indonesia. Number 3 Ganongan. Ganongan is a historical heritage building in Indonesia, located in the city of Banda Asay. Number 4 Museum Tsunami Asay. The Asay Tsunami Museum is a museum dedicated to remembering the impact of the devastating tsunami disaster in 2004 in Asay, Indonesia. Number 5 Lampuk Beach. Lampuk Beach is a beautiful and popular beach in Asay, Indonesia, renowned for its white sand, surf-friendly waves, and stunning ocean views. Number 6 Pinto Kapasay. Pinto Kapasay is a unique tradition in Asay, Indonesia, which involves jumping through two narrow doors as part of a test of the courage and trust of the local people. Thank you for enjoying our journey through the beautiful landmarks of Asay. We hope this video has given you a deeper insight into the rich culture and beauty of this city. Hello, food enthusiasts! Today, we are going on a culinary journey to East Java, Indonesia, to explore its rich and diverse cuisine. East Java is known for its vibrant flavors and unique dishes that are a delight to the taste buds. Join me as we discover 8 must-try traditional foods from this region. Here's a story about 8 must-try traditional dishes from East Java that you can upload on YouTube. Our first stop is Rewan, a famous black beef soup that originates from East Java. What makes this dish special is its thick, black broth made from a blend of spices, including kaluak, which gives it a distinct flavor. Served with steamed rice, sliced beef, bean sprouts, salted eggs, and a side of spicy sambal, Rewan is a true culinary gem. Next on our list is Rujak Singer, a refreshing fruit salad with a twist. This salad features a combination of sliced fruits like cucumber, mango, kedendon, and the unique addition of singer, boiled cow's nose. The fruits are served with a special peanut sauce and topped with crispy crackers, creating a delightful mix of flavors and textures. Now, let's try Say Klopo, a unique version of Indonesian satay. 
This satay is made by skewering pieces of chicken or beef along with grated young coconut, which is then grilled to perfection. The combination of tender meat and the sweet and savory taste of coconut will surely leave you wanting more. We can't miss nasi pestle, a traditional East Javanese dish that consists of steamed rice served with boiled vegetables such as long beans, spinach, kong kong, and bean sprouts. The dish is completed with a flavorful pestle sauce, made from a blend of aromatic spices. Don't forget to enjoy it with crispy tempeh, fried tofu, and crunchy rempeyek crackers. Our culinary adventure takes us to lantong balap, a beloved Surabaya dish. Lantong balap features rice cakes, lantong, fried tofu, lindo, mung bean fritters, bean sprouts, and a flavorful petty sauce. All these ingredients are mixed together to create a delicious medley of flavors. Now, let's savor Soto Ayam Lamangan, a popular chicken soup from Lamangan, East Java. The fragrant chicken broth is served with tender chicken pieces, yellow noodles, bean sprouts, celery leaves, and crispy fried shallots. Add a squeeze of lime and some spicy sambal to enhance the flavors of this heartwarming soup. For seafood lovers, peso lele is a must-try dish. It consists of deep-fried catfish served with steamed rice, fresh vegetables, such as cucumber, basil leaves, cassava leaves, and long beans, and a flavorful pestle sauce. The combination of crispy fish and the spicy savory sauce will tantalize your taste buds. Lastly, we have tahu camper, a dish that brings together fried tofu, noodles, bean sprouts, boiled shrimp, and a savory broth. The combination of textures and flavors in this dish creates a delightful eating experience. Those are eight typical East Javanese foods that must be tried. Get ready to join us on this delicious culinary adventure on our YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Welcome to our channel. In this video, we will discuss and introduce you to the wealth of Indonesian culinary delights. Get ready to explore a variety of mouth-watering specialties, appetizing aromas, and unique gastronomic cultures that exist throughout the archipelago. Prepare yourself for an unforgettable culinary adventure. Let's explore Indonesian specialties. Get to know the flavors and the stories behind every bite. Together, we will explore the beauty of culture through the taste of food. Asay fried rice is a typical Acenese fried rice dish which is rich in spices and has a distinctive spicy taste. It is usually made using fried rice with spices such as shallots, garlic, chilies, ginger, turmeric and other spices. Acenese fried rice is often served with sliced cucumbers, tomatoes and cucumber pickles to give this dish a delicacy and freshness. Mie assay is a noodle with a typical assay sauce which is very different from noodles in general. This noodle has a strong spicy taste and is rich in spices such as chili, shallots, garlic, turmeric, and lemongrass. Usually assay noodles are served with beef, chicken or shrimp, and added vegetables such as spring onions and bean sprouts. The uniqueness of Acenese noodles lies in their rich broth and appetizing aroma of spices. Mature satay is a satay dish originating from assay. The difference with satay in general is the way it is served. Cooked satay is served with peanut sauce which is cooked beforehand, so it has a thicker texture and slightly oily gravy. The meat used is usually beef or mutton which has been cut into small pieces and skewered on a bamboo skewer before being grilled. Ripe satay also has a distinctive spicy taste because of the spices used in its processing.
Ayam batutu is a famous Balinese dish. Whole chicken is cooked with special spices and seasonings, such as garlic, shallots, chilies, lemongrass, lime leaves, and other spices. The chicken is then wrapped in banana leaves and steamed or grilled slowly until the chicken meat becomes soft and the spices permeate. Ayam batutu has a very distinctive rich, spicy, and aromatic taste. Babi guling is a Balinese food which is famous throughout Indonesia. This food consists of pork stuffed with spices such as garlic, shallots, ginger, turmeric, and other spices. Then, the pork is traditionally roasted over coals using a special grill. Babi guling has crispy skin and juicy meat, with spices seeping into it. This dish is usually served with white rice, vegetables, and Balinese sambal. Sate lilit is a Balinese satay dish that is different from satay in general. Meat, such as chicken, beef, or fish, is finely chopped and then mixed with herbs and spices such as shallots, garlic, lemongrass, lime leaves, and grated coconut. This mixture is then formed into coils on bamboo skewers or lemongrass, and baked until cooked. Sait Lilit has a unique taste and is rich in typical Balinese spices. Sait Bandang is a typical Bantan dish made from milkfish. The milkfish that has been cut into pieces is then skewered on a skewer, then seasoned with typical spices, such as garlic, pepper, and salt. Milkfish satay is usually grilled until cooked and served with a delicious peanut sauce. This dish has a unique and delicious taste with a combination of soft fish and a distinctive aroma of spices. Nasi yuduk is a typical Banten food consisting of rice cooked with coconut milk, lemongrass, pandan leaves and spices such as shallots, garlic and candlenut. Nasi yuduk is usually served with accompaniments such as scrambled eggs, fried chicken, fried tempeh, and comes with crackers, sliced cucumber, and chili sauce. This dish has a fragrant aroma and savory taste, making it a popular staple food choice in Banten. Empel Gentong is a typical Banten dish in the form of beef stew cooked with spices such as ginger, garlic, pepper, and cardamom. The long cooking of the beef makes it tender and has a rich flavor. Empel gentong is usually served with sliced beef, bean sprouts, and accompanied by white rice. This dish has a distinctive and appetizing taste. Even though it is called Kota Makassar, this dish is actually a Garantolo specialty which is also popular in the Makassar region. Koto Makassar is beef soup made from boiling beef offal with a special mixture of spices such as shallots, garlic, turmeric, chilies, and other spices. Koto Makassar is usually served with ketapat, yellow noodles, chips, and fried onions. This dish has a rich savory taste with a distinctive aroma of spices. Conro is a typical Garantolo food consisting of beef ribs cooked in a special sauce with spices such as garlic, shallots, ginger, chilies, and other spices. The process of cooking conro is done by boiling it for a long time until the beef ribs become soft and the gravy is thick. Conro is usually served with white rice, chili sauce, and pickled cucumber. This dish has a delicious, savory, and slightly spicy taste. Ikan bakar is a popular dish in Garantolo which is famous for its rich seafood. Fresh fish, such as snapper, tuna or mackerel, are seasoned with a mixture of spices such as shallots, garlic, chilies, ginger and turmeric. The fish is then grilled over coals or charcoal which gives it a distinctive smoke taste. Grilled fish is usually served with white rice, chili sauce, and fresh vegetables. This dish has a savory taste and delicacy of fish meat combined with a delicious aroma of smoke. Nasi liwet is a famous food from West Java. 
Nasi Liwet is cooked in the traditional way using rice mixed with coconut milk, lemon grass, bay leaves and spices such as shallots, garlic and galangal. Nasi Liwet is usually served with various side dishes such as shredded chicken, eggs, salted fish, vegetables and chili sauce. This dish has a savory, delicious taste and fragrant aroma. Badagar stands for Bakso Tahu Goreng, which is a typical West Javanese dish consisting of fried fish balls, tofu, and pempek. Badagar is usually served with rich peanut sauce, sweet soy sauce, and fried shallots. This dish has a chewy and crunchy texture with a delicious combination of savory and sweet flavors. Surabi is a typical West Javanese dessert or snack. Surabi is made from fermented and steamed rice flour dough. Surabi is usually served with a sprinkling of grated coconut and brown sugar which gives a sweet taste and a distinctive aroma. There are two types of surabi, namely sweet surabi which has a soft texture, and salty surabi which has a savory taste with additional ingredients such as spring onions or shallots. Gyudeg is a typical central Javanese food made from young jackfruit cooked with coconut milk, coconut sugar and various spices such as bay leaves, galangal and candlenut. The process of cooking gyudeg takes a long time so that the jackfruit meat becomes soft and the spices absorb. Gyudeg is usually served with rice, free-range chicken, eggs, tofu and sambal kresek. This dish has a sweet taste with a slightly savory characteristic. Soto is a traditional soup that is famous throughout Indonesia, including Central Java. Soto Central Java generally uses chicken or beef cooked in a rich broth, filled with noodles, bean sprouts, chunks of meat, and spices such as garlic, shallots, ginger, and lemongrass. Each region in Central Java has different Soto variations, such as Soto Samarang and Soto Kudus. This dish is usually served with accompaniments such as lime, chili sauce, and crackers. Nasi Pesel is a typical Central Javanese rice dish served with boiled green vegetables such as long beans, kale, cassava leaves and bean sprouts, and topped with a rich peanut sauce. Peanut sauce is made from ingredients such as peanuts, chili, brown sugar, and salt. Pestle rice is usually also equipped with boiled eggs, tempeh, tofu, and crackers. This dish has a savory, spicy and fresh taste. Soto Banjar is a typical West Kalimantan dish consisting of a savory broth soup filled with chicken or beef, eggs, cakes and yellow noodles. Banjar Soto sauce is rich in spices such as shallots, garlic, lemongrass, ginger, and turmeric. Soto Banjar is usually served with additional lime, chili sauce, and crackers. This dish has a distinctive and delicious taste, combining the delicacy of the soup with a variety of fillings. Serending Daging is a West Kalimantan dish made from beef which is processed into serending with the addition of spices and grated coconut. Beef is thinly sliced and cooked with spices such as garlic, chili, ginger and coconut milk, then sautéed until dry and crunchy. Serending meat is usually served as a side dish or garnish on rice or lontong. This dish has a savory, spicy, and rich taste of spices. Ketapat Kandangan is a typical West Kalimantan dish in the form of ketapat made from peeled rice and wrapped in coconut leaves. Ketapat Kandangan is usually served with side dishes such as serending, pumpkin vegetables, rendang, and chili sauce. This dish is often served on important occasions or celebrations, such as Eid al fitr or weddings. Ketapat Kandangan has a chewy texture and delicious taste, a symbol of togetherness and harmony in West Kalimantan culture. Mia Balitang is a noodle dish typical of the Bank of Balitang Islands. 
These noodles are made from wheat flour dough which is processed into yellow noodles, which are then served with thick, seasoned gravy, sliced beef, shrimp, eggs, and vegetables such as mustard greens or kaisim. Belitan noodles have a chewy noodle texture and a delicious gravy. This dish is often served with extra chili sauce or sweet soy sauce, and comes with crackers as a compliment. Soto Banca is a traditional soup dish of the Banca Belitan Islands. This soto is made from chicken or beef broth filled with sliced meat, yellow noodles, bean sprouts, potatoes, and boiled eggs. Soto banca sauce has a distinctive savory taste with a touch of spices such as lemongrass, galangal, and ginger. This dish is usually served with additional fried onions, lime, and chili sauce. Gongan -gong is a typical dish of the Bank of Belitan Islands which is made from fresh fish such as snapper or stingray cooked with turmeric and tamarind spices. The fish is boiled in a thick, savory yellow sauce with the addition of basil leaves, green onions and spices such as shallots, garlic and chilies. This dish has a fresh, sour and savory taste. Gongan -gong is usually served with white rice and sambal as a compliment. Nasi papita is a typical Maluku dish made from sago flour mixed with water and cooked until it becomes a thick porridge-like texture. Nasi papita is usually served with fish sauce which is rich in spices such as turmeric, lemongrass, ginger and garlic. This dish is usually eaten with side dishes such as fish, chicken or seafood. Papita rice has a chewy and soft texture, and gives a delicious and full taste. Ikenkua kuning is a yellow sauce fish dish that is typical of Maluku. The fish used can vary, such as snapper, tuna, or tuna. This fish is cooked with spices of turmeric, garlic, ginger, lemongrass, and chilies, resulting in a bright yellow gravy. This dish has a savory taste with a distinctive touch of spices. Kua cunning fish is usually served with white rice or papita rice. Sago aran is a traditional dessert made from sago flour mixed with water and palm sugar. This dish has a chewy and sweet texture with a distinctive aroma from palm sugar. Sago aran is usually served in the form of pudding or often called sago cake. This dish is a popular dessert in Maluku and has an important role in the culture and traditions of the local community. Thanks for watching our video about Indonesian specialties. We hope you enjoy the culinary adventures we share. See you in our next video. Kami bangsa Indonesia dengan ini menyatakan kemerdekaan Indonesia Hal-hal yang mengenai pemindahan kekuasaan dan lain-lain diselenggarakan dengan cara saksama
Dan dalam tempo yang sesingkat-singkatnya Jakarta 17 Agustus 1945 Atas nama bangsa Indonesia Soekarno Hatta Welcome to my channel Today, we will discuss Indonesian heroes who inspired and gave the struggle for this country's independence From war heroes, freedom fighters, to cultural figures who raised the glory of the nation They are figures that we should remember and set as examples. Through this video, let's explore the stories of Indonesian heroes that are rarely heard of and attract attention. Join us as we celebrate their dedication and sacrifice to build a better future. So, don't miss this moment. Let's begin our journey through history full of inspiration and pride. Indonesian heroes made an unforgettable journey. Here are some Indonesian heroes that we will discuss on this occasion. The first hero is Sokarno. Bong Karno, or Sokarno, was the proclaimer and first president of the Republic of Indonesia. He was born on June 6, 1901 in Surabaya. As an important figure in the struggle for Indonesian independence, Bong Karno led the Indonesian people through a long struggle to achieve independence from Dutch colonialism. He officially proclaimed Indonesian independence on August 17, 1945. A unique fact about Bong Karno that many people don't know is that he was a talented songwriter and poet. He wrote various nationalist songs and poems which became symbols of the spirit of the nation's struggle. Apart from that, Bong Karno was also known for his charismatic spirit and inspiring speeches, which made him one of the most influential figures in Indonesian history. Second hero is Muhammad Hatta. Bong Hatta, or Muhammad Hatta, was one of the important figures in the struggle for Indonesian independence and the first vice president of the Republic of Indonesia. He was born on August 12, 1902 in Bukitinggi, West Sumatra. Together with Bong Karno, Bong Hatta played a key role in proclaiming Indonesia's independence. He was also one of the leading figures in the formulation and drafting of the 1945 Constitution. A unique fact that is not known to many people is that Bong Hatta was a talented economist. He completed his economic studies in the Netherlands and became one of the leading economists in Indonesia at his time. Its contribution to national economic development is enormous, including in the formulation of pro-people economic policies. Apart from that, Bong Hatta was also known for his humble personality, high intellect, and persistent spirit in fighting for the independence and welfare of the nation. Third hero is Diponegoro. Diponegoro, or Prince Diponegoro, is an Indonesian national hero known for his resistance against Dutch colonialism in the 19th century. He was born on November 11, 1785 in Yogyakarta, central Java. Diponegoro came from a royal family and had a good education, including in religion, art, and philosophy. A unique fact that is not known to many people is that Diponegoro is a talented artist. He was proficient in painting and making other works of art, such as sculptures and wood carvings. Apart from that, Diponegoro also had skills in traditional Javanese music and often played gamelan instruments. His expertise in art is not only a personal expression, but is also used as a means to convey messages and the spirit of resistance against the colonialists. Fourth hero is Kihajar Duantara. Kihajar Duantara, whose real name was Radin Masawardi Sorjaningrad, was a well-known Indonesian struggler and educator. He was born on May 2, 1889 in Yogyakarta, central Java. Kihajar Duantara was the founder of national education in Indonesia and became a major figure in the educational movement during the colonial period. A unique fact that not many people know is that Kihajar Duantara is also a prolific writer. He writes poetry, short stories, and articles in various mass media. In addition, Kihajar Dewantara also translated literary works from foreign languages into Indonesian. 
His involvement in literature is a testament to his love for Indonesian language and culture, as well as his efforts to enrich and preserve Indonesia's literary heritage. The fifth hero is Radna Jen Kartini. Radna Jen Kartini, or better known as Kartini, is an Indonesian national hero who was born on April 21, 1879 in Jepara, central Java. She is known for her struggle in fighting for women's rights and education for Indonesian women. Kartini is one of the pioneering figures of the women's emancipation movement in Indonesia, and she is known as a figure who is persistent in fighting traditions that limit women. A unique fact that not many people know is that Kartini was very interested in agriculture. She has his own garden at his home in Jepara and is often directly involved in farming activities, such as growing rice and vegetables. Kartini's interest in agriculture reflected her passion for advancing Indonesian society as a whole, not only in terms of education and gender equality, but also in the agricultural sector which was the source of life for many people in Indonesia at that time. The sixth hero is Kut Nayak Dain. Kut Nayak Dain is an Indonesian national hero who was born in 1848 in Assei, Sumatra. She is known as one of the female figures who fought steadfastly against the Dutch colonialists in the Assei War. At a young age, Kut Nayak Dain was involved in the battle against the invaders with various tactics and courage. A unique fact that not many people know is that Kut Nayak Dain is an expert in using Asaya's traditional weapon called Rinsome. She was very skilled in playing this weapon and mastered fighting techniques with Rinsome which made him one of the warriors feared by the Dutch troops. Her expertise in using Rinsome became one of the important factors in leading the Ace Nis resistance against the Dutch colonialists. The seventh hero is Sultan Hassanuddin. Sultan Hasanuddin is an Indonesian national hero who was born on January 12, 1631 in Gawa, South Sulawesi. He was the 16th King of Gawa who played an important role in the resistance against Dutch colonialism in the 17th century. Sultan Hasanuddin is famous for his strong leadership and brilliant war strategy. A unique fact that not many people know is that he also has the ability as a poet. He was able to write beautiful poems and captivate the hearts of his listeners. These poems not only describe courage and fighting spirit, but also the beauty of South Sulawesi culture. Sultan Hasanuddin is an outstanding example of upholding local wisdom as well as leading the resistance against colonialists, making him one of the respected and immortalized heroes in Indonesian history. The eighth hero is Augustian Gura Rai. Augustine Gura Rai is an Indonesian national hero who was born on January 30, 1917 in Karansuri village, Bali. He is known as a resistance commander in the Battle of Puputan Marjorana in 1946, which was an important event in the struggle against Dutch colonialism. Gura Rai was a brave and persistent leader, leading his troops with extraordinary toughness and courage. A unique fact that is not known to many people is that before becoming a war hero, Ngura Rai initially aspired to become a dentist. He had even been accepted at the dental faculty in Jakarta, but chose to follow his calling as a freedom fighter. His decision shows deep devotion and love for the nation and homeland. Augusti Ngura Rai is a figure who is respected and remembered as one of the heroes who fought with determination and high enthusiasm in fighting for Indonesian independence. The ninth hero is Tuku Umar. Tuku Umar is an Indonesian national hero who was born on February 10, 1854 in Milabo, Assei. He is known as a persistent and brave fighter in the struggle against Dutch colonialism in Assei. As a warlord, Tuku Umar leads troops with strong leadership and brilliant strategy. A unique fact that is not known to many people is that Tuku Umar also has talent in the field of music, especially in playing traditional Aceanese musical instruments such as the fiddle. His musical talent is often used as a means of gathering masses and motivating fighters. His courage and skill in battle as well as his love for art made Tuku Umar a figure who was respected and remembered as a hero who fought tirelessly for the independence of Assei and Indonesia. 
the tenth hero is Sissinga Mangaraja 12. Sissinga Mangaraja 12 is a national hero from Tana Batak, North Sumatra, who was born on February 22, 1849. He is known as a resistance leader against Dutch colonialism in the 19th century. A unique fact that is rarely known by the general public is that Sissinga Mangaraja 12 has a legend of being invulnerable to weapons, which made him famous among Batak warriors. That said, he is said to have magical powers that protect him from enemy attacks and firearms. Apart from that, Sissinga Mangaraja 12 was also famous for his determination and courage in leading a guerrilla war against the Dutch, which made it difficult for the colonial troops to capture or defeat him. His courage and determination in fighting the invaders made him a strong and respected symbol of resistance in the history of the struggle of the Indonesian people. The eleventh hero is Martha Christina Tayahau. Martha Christina Tayahau, also known as Christina Marian, is an Indonesian national hero who was born on January 10, 1800 in Maluku. She is a woman warrior who staunchly against Dutch colonialism in the 19th century. A unique fact that is rarely known by the general public is that Tayahahu has expertise in war strategy and plays an important role in leading the resistance forces in Maluku. She is renowned for his bravery in battle and ability to motivate troops. Apart from that, Tayahahu is also known as one of the first women to be actively involved in the struggle for Indonesian independence. Her dedication and struggle as a female fighter has made her an inspirational example for the younger generation in fighting for women's rights and dignity. The twelfth hero is Sultan Hamankubuno IX. Sultan Hamankubuno IX, born with the real name Raden Mastarajatan on April 12, 1912 in Yogyakarta, is an Indonesian national hero and is the ninth Sultan of the Yogyakarta Sultanate. He played a very important role in the struggle for Indonesian independence, including in efforts to maintain the territorial integrity of the Yogyakarta Sultanate amidst the political upheaval at that time. A unique fact that is not yet known by the general public is that Sultan Hamankubuno IX was one of the highly educated leaders, with a bachelor's degree in law from Leiden University in the Netherlands. In addition, he is also known as a progressive thinker who encourages modernization and development in Yogyakarta. This visionary leader with a nationalist spirit is also known for his dedication to advancing education, social welfare, and cultural arts in Yogyakarta. Let's never forget the services of Indonesian heroes who have fought hard for the independence and progress of the nation. Hopefully this video can be a reminder that inspires us all to appreciate and protect their legacy of struggle. Together, let's keep fighting and building a better Indonesia, honoring history, and honoring the services of our heroes. Thank you for watching this video.